What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on the brand new B-Link SEI 14. Roll the intro. Now price under £600, this mini PC is powered by the Intel Core Ultra 5 125H along with DDR5 RAM, we have Thunderbolt 4 and lots lots more. So can't wait to see how this thing performs, but first of all, inside the box you will find a user manual, an HDMI cable, power cable, a power supply and I'll give you a close up of that voltage information and last but certainly not least the mini PC itself. All right, so quickly run through the specs. So this is powered by the Intel Core Ultra 5 125H with 14 cores, 18 threads, clocked at 3.3 gigahertz base and up to 4.5 gigahertz turbo. For graphics, we have the integrated Intel Arc graphics. This has 32 gigs of DDR5 dual channel RAM, upgradable to 96 gigabytes. We have a one terabyte M.2 SSD PCIe 4.0 and that can be replaced with a four terabyte drive and there is a spare M.2 PCIe 4.0 slot. And again, you can stick another four terabyte drive in there. Now you also get Wi-Fi 2.5 gigabit LAN, Bluetooth 5.2. This is running Windows 11 Professional and supports triple 4K display output via HDMI, DisplayPort, and Thunderbolt 4. So design-wise, this thing is made completely from metal. It's available in two colors. I've got frost silver here, but you can also pick this up in a slightly darker space gray. Love the smooth rounded corners. Reminds me of the Apple Mac Mini, but it's a lot taller. Now on the front for ports, we've got power button. We've got a power indicator, headphone jack. We've got a Type-C port, so that is USB-C 3.1. And we've got a full-size USB 3 port. On the side, we have nothing. On the back, now the USB ports are not color coded. You can see they're all the same color, but I'll tell you what is what. So the top port is USB 3, bottom port is USB 2, and this port over here is USB 2. We've got a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, Display port 1.4, HDMI 2.1. We've got another headphone jack. And the reason why we have two, if you didn't want to stick a connection on the front, because sometimes it can look messy if you have too many wires on the front, just for convenience, there's one on the back. Now over here, you can see your Thunderbolt 4 port, and then you've got your power socket. Nothing on this side. And that brings us back to the front. And here's a quick look at the bottom of the mini PC. The cooling system is quite special in this mini PC. We've got a cool air intake from the bottom and the heat dissipates from the rear exhaust. And to add to that cooling efficiency, you also got a vapor chamber and the internal cooling fan is supposed to be quite silent in operation along with SSD heatsink too. Right, so quick look at the internals. To access the internals, you need to remove the sticky feet, which you have four of these and you do need something sharp to take them off. Now you've got four screws to remove. Let's go. Once you remove the four screws, there is a little flap here, which helps you lift the lid off. No worries about any wires, there's no wires connected. Now, something new here for B-Link PCs. We've got a new internal mesh filter here. Um, it's made from metal and it's supposed to keep out the dust from the system, which is a, again, a new feature, which is most welcome. So we're gonna open two more screws so we can get this dust filter off. So, it's, uh... so here we are guys, here are the internals. This is all you have to do to access the internals. Okay, so the configuration for RAM, we have two sticks of 16 gigs DDR5 RAM in each slot. You can have maximum 96 gigs of RAM. So basically 48 gigs per slot, if that's even possible. Um, so that's your RAM. Over here is the SSD storage. There is an SSD heatsink on top. And if you look closely, you can see there are two slots. One is empty and the other one is our one terabyte internal storage with Windows pre-installed. If you want to upgrade, you remove the heatsink and then you'll have two slots to play with. You can replace them both with four terabytes each, giving you a maximum of eight terabytes of SSD storage, which is great. That's pretty much future-proof there. And those are your upgrade options. This is the full version of Windows 11 Professional. I am connected to my 4K capture card and you can see here, desktop resolution is set to 3840 by 2160. Now let's quickly check out the system properties. So as you can see, Windows 11 Professional with the Intel Core Ultra 5 125H clocked at three gigahertz. You can see 32 gigs of RAM, 64 bit operating system. And if we have a look at the activation details, you can see it's activated and ready to use. System storage info. So we've got a one terabyte drive from which 930 gigs are usable. And from that we have 888 gigs free to use. So I've not installed anything yet. This is what you're gonna see when you first power on. 
Now the second drive you are seeing is my 64 gig flash drive which contains all my 4K samples. So let's play some 4K video samples from a USB drive starting off with the usual 4K high bitrate Jellyfish demo. And the first clip is 160 megabits per second and you can see it's playing back fine with no issues. Let's try the second clip which is 180 megabits per second and you can see no sweat that's also playing back very nice and smooth. Now the real test, 400 megabits per second, 4K Jellyfish demo. Started off a little bit stuttery and it smoothed itself out. And you can see the video playback is nice and smooth. No issues here either. So now we are going to test a few 4K samples with different file types and HDR formats. And you can see they are all playing back fine. Super smooth HDR videos with no issues. All right, so moving on to some video streaming on YouTube and it does support 4K 60 Max. So let's play a whole bunch of trailers. I don't care. Get out of this. We make it look like a murder. We clean our tracks. We take the money and pin it on someone else. Psycho killer. Just so next up, I loaded up Netflix from the web browser and I can confirm Netflix does support Ultra HD 4K streaming with spatial audio. All right, so moving on to some gaming and we're starting off with GTA 5. Now we've got the resolution set to 1080p, graphics set to very high and we are playing at 60 hertz. And you can see we're achieving just over 60 frames per second. So GTA is playing pretty smooth at this resolution and graphic settings. But GTA 5 is quite an old game. So let's try something a bit more recent. The next game we are playing is A Plague Tale. And this game is quite graphically intense. And the old Intel Iris graphics in older mini PCs could not handle this game. But the new Intel Arc is handling it quite well. Resolution is set to 1080p and graphics is set to the lowest but we are achieving just over 30 frames per second, which is actually quite good for an Intel MPU. So the next game we are testing is WWE 2K24, and I have the resolution set to 1080p, 60 hertz, texture settings are set to standard, and everything else is set to medium. And as you can see, the game is playing pretty well at a comfortable 60 frames per second. So the gaming performance of this mini PC has actually surprised me so far. It's actually pretty good. Now, I think we're going to have to do a quick PS3 emulation test. So we're playing Fight Night Champion using the RP CS3 emulator with Vulcan backend. And you can see this game is playing pretty well at 30 frames per second. So emulation wise, you can play more or less everything else like PS2, PSP, Dreamcast, GameCube, N64. They all run absolutely fine. Jabs by Mike Tyson. Takes one, but gives one. Good work by Lennox. I think Lennox Lewis is seeing. There it is! What a hook to the body, and he is down and in bad shape. So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench, single core score of 2125, and multi core score of 11,059. And in the anti to benchmark test, we achieved 873k. And finally, here is the CPU benchmark score by Passmark, so it achieves just over 22K. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2024, allowing you to see which mini PCs perform the best, and also lets you compare the specs, features, and the prices. Now all the mini PCs on this chart are ranked by overall benchmark results. So based on that, you can see the B-Link SEI 14 has taken position 6 on this chart, with a benchmark score of 873K. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure and completely free of charge. So there you have it guys, that was the B-Link SEI 14. So another impressive mini PC by this brand, featuring a new powerful Intel SoC, offering plenty of power and performance, connectivity, and even DIY upgrade options. And like always, great build quality as well from B-Link. This mini PC is great for general office applications, web browsing, playing AAA PC games at medium to low settings. This can also handle 4K video editing, desktop publishing. It's always nice to have some ports on the front, and Thunderbolt 4 is a big bonus. And you have triple 4K display output. 
you've got a really nice space saving form factor all metal design and my review and my test pretty much sum up what you can do with this mini pc and, and what it can handle gaming wise so do let me know in the comments what you think of this one and with all of that being said if you want to see more of my latest and greatest unbiased tech reviews hit the like button sub to the channel and hit the bell icon thank you so much for watching and i hope you all have an amazing day i'll catch you all in the next one peace